My grandson's been begging me for some time to teach him how to make games in Roblox. So this series is going to cover the entire process and share this with everybody. So I've been teaching game design and development for over 20 years now. We're going to go through the process of the basics that I would teach for any intro game class, game development class for using a uh, tool like Roblox Studio. And then we're gonna start making some games. So this, this first project, today's tutorial is the core. It actually follows a lot of the core tutorial that is on the Roblox site. If you wanna see this in the written form, it's there on the Creator Hub under the tutorials for creating a core project or creating a project. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I will go a lot more in depth than what they do in the tutorials on talking about the scripting because I've written a couple of books on Lua scripting and hopefully you'll find that useful. Okay, so we've got our Roblox Studio installed. We're going to go to new and we're going to just simply open a base plate and that will start our environment. The IDE or Roblox Studio looks a lot like you would find in Unity, in Unreal, in any game engine tool set that's out there. So we're going to get started. We've got our basic Roblox Studio base project. First thing we're going to do is delete the ground. So over here in Explorer, this would be called Hierarchy in Unity. We're going to go over here to Base Plate and right click on it and that brings up our context menu. And then we can go down and we're going to get rid of the ground because we're going to create islands for this core project. And that has gotten rid of everything but my spawn location. But the workspace is what's in your world. That's what the player is going to be able to see. Next, let's add some islands for our player to be able to jump between. So I'm going to go over here and make sure the editor is selected, which, will, which should be open by default. And this will be your terrain editor and we're going to create some islands and to do that we're going to go over here on our terrain editor instead of create we're going to use edit and we're going to draw our islands in so i'm going to click on draw and that opens up a whole bunch of new add items so we're going to add we're going to keep our brush shape at the default our brush size is at 32 and we need to choose what kind of material we want it to look like. Um, since this is an island, I don't want an asphalt island. So we're going to go with the limestone. That, that'll work. And then we're going to click inside the environment to create our sand. Now. You may not have seen anything happen right now, but my, my spawn point turned gray. Something's going on. So I'm going to scroll back and you can see, oh, it created this giant sand area, limestone area, over my spawn point. And now suddenly it, it looks huge. If you didn't see how to scroll back, use your middle mouse button, the, the scroll wheel. If you don't have a three button mouse, this gets a lot tougher. I prefer a three button mouse where the middle mouse button is a scroll wheel that's commonly used for game development. So and I'll, I'll include a link in the description below as to which type of mouse I'm using. You can scroll back. We've got our our limestone now and now you can see it. You can of course add another one right there a little bit closer and we'll scroll back again. You used your right mouse button and the WASD buttons. You can move around and see your what you've been creating. There you go. So you've been we, we've got a basic uh, start for an island, but we're going to need to make some challenge, challenges to that. Right now, if our player were to jump on that, they'd probably fall off because of how curved it is. So we can flatten that, and we're going to flatten all of this flattening it so that we got a nice flat surface and you can use the D key and the right mouse button to move things around and I can flatten that so it levels all of that out and our player is going to be able to run around on that. Just keep moving your mouse button until you're happy with the shape of it and it'll build up or take down depending on what needs to be done for making it a smooth 
flat surface. There, now we've got something for our player to jump onto. Now we can use all of our different buttons here to work on this. We can use Sculpt to make this look a little more natural. And that, of course, is taking away because I'm on Subtract. If I want to add, you just simply click on the Add button, and we can build up around the edge to try and discourage our players from falling off. Great, now everything's going along just like we want. The next thing we need to do is add some water since this is an island. So we're going to go over here to fill and then we're going to use the replace. Now, but by default, it's going to look at where your current location is. I wanna adjust this a little bit. I want this to make sure that we're below the the level of the island's land so it's not underground. So we're gonna try these settings, uh, 1808 and Z and then the position is 0, negative 15, 0. And this is giving it everything in an X, Y, Z coordinate, which is standard in game development because we're working in a 3D environment. Y is up and down, or vertical inside the environment. If I shift the look so that we're looking at it more straight on, up and down, the green arrow is Y, and then the red arrow is X, and the blue arrow is Z. So that gives us a clue as to the directions of everything. So if I'm saying a Y of negative 15, that means it's below the base setting a negative amount, negative 15 units. And we're going to use replace mode in our fill. We're going to tell it that we want to replace all the air below this setting with water, not ice. And that's glacier. There's water. So we're going to select water and say replace. And now we've got water. Just like that. That simple. Isn't that cool? So we're making great progress. Before we start applying any materials or going the next step where we're going to be playtesting, we need to save what we're doing. Always save on a regular basis on what you're doing with your project. So I'm going to name this Island 1. Just for our, our first project and we're going to we're, I'm going to disable the cloud save because I don't need that right now and then we're just going to click on save and now this is saved to my local computer and it will be ready to go so always save what you're doing okay let's make our island a little prettier I'm going over to paint and I've got a brush size set to six. That may be a little large for what we're going to do, but it'll, we can always change that. So let's select grass and let's start by giving our island a nice grass texture. Just paint it on there. Like I said, six might be a little large. We can scroll back if we're not seeing everything. Uh, probably don't want to go down here change that back to sandstone down here because I don't want players going down there. Keep keep the green to where you want the players to be able to run. This gives them a nice visual clue of where they can walk inside the environment. It's always a good idea to do it that way. Okay, and then if you're not happy with that, I'm going to I want some variation in that, so I'm going to shrink my brush size down. Let's go to a 3. Let's do leafy grass here along the edge. Kind of gives the player, hey, you're right here at the edge. Don't go any further. Well, you might fall off. Ah, that would be bad. And then the parts that I messed up, I'll go back here and change back to sandstone, which was the default that I used earlier. And you always move around. See where you messed up on your painting. I messed up a lot here. Clean that up real quick. We don't need this either. Okay, we need to reposition our spawn tool, our spawn location, so that we can spawn onto the island. So the first thing we need to do is move over here, get over here towards our water. I'm using the WASD keys, and I want a more side view of the island. Now there's other keys that will help us move around, but since this is the vi first video, I want you to get used to using WASD for moving around inside the environment. Click the spawn location in your explorer, and see, it, it'll show up as a little blue square there, 
and we're going to select the move command. Make sure you're on home tab and we're going to click and with the move command selected we can move our spawn point up onto our island. You may have to pull it a little bit around but we want to set that right there on the island. Yeah, right there. That'll work great. Hit your save. Let's save the file, which will give me my Roblox file on my local. I guess the first time I saved it, I saved it to the Roblox itself. Uh, the server, no, I, I only want to save it to my local. So we're going to save to file so that everything is saved there and ready to go. Okay, once we've got it looking the way we want, let's try it. See how it plays. One little start, and there he is. I got my first environment. I can run around on it. The grass needs mode. But hey, we've got a, a simple starter environment ready to go. So that's a great starting place. Let's make sure you save when you're done testing. Click stop. Make sure you save your project as a file to your local computer or you can save to Roblox, either one. Save it and then next time we're going to start designing our actual game and then the third tutorial will get into the Lua scripting that makes Roblox really do all the cool stuff. Good job! I'm already in the process of making the next set of tutorials for this Roblox series. What kind of game do you want to make in Roblox? Is it a real-time strategy? Is it a first-person shooter? Is it a follow an action role-playing game? What do you want to make? Tell me in the comments below. We'll see you next time.